Welcome to the No Spin News, October 11th, Wednesday, 2023. Stand up for your country. As Rosanna, Rosanna Dana once said, it's always something. So I write a message of the day. And again, I hope you go to BillOReilly.com and read it every morning. No charge, free for all. And basically excoriating Iran for funding and enabling Hamas to attack Israel and kill civilians. Now, I believe that's true. Well, today, CNN comes out and says, no, it's not true. Iran didn't have anything to do with it. I go, what? So CNN is using anonymous sources, of course. And I'm going to analyze this, and it's fascinating. So I hope you hang tough. And that is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. All right, so let's run this down. Um, The Hamas terror attack is affecting the whole world. Everybody's engaged. I don't know how much the Chinese people know about it because the government censors everything. In Russia, there's so many people who have ties to Israel that everybody knows. So there are a number of things in play. The United States has done and said the right thing. As Joe Biden said once again today, we've got to back Israel. Roll the tape. There is no justification for terrorism, no excuse. And the type of terrorism that was exhibited here was just beyond the pale, beyond the pale. As I said yesterday, my commitment to Israel's security and the safety of the Jewish people is unshakable. But Mr. Biden will not ask, or I should say answer, any specific questions. So he could have taken questions there, but he ran away. Said he had to take a phone call from Netanyahu, which could have been scheduled any time, believe me. So Biden doesn't want to get involved with the, what am I going to do questions. He just doesn't want to do it. And he didn't mention Iran in, hasn't mentioned it at all. Okay, so CNN's giving Biden cover now by saying, look, it wasn't Iran, and we know that because somebody told us. (laughs) <laughs> you know, OK, who was that person? Nah, see, it, it's anonymous sources. Look, I could be wrong here. But the odds that Iran didn't enable this terror attack and war are about 10 to 1. How do I know that? Because I wrote Killing the Killers. And I know what Iran does. And I know how Donald Trump neutralized Iran. And it was very, very severe. So as you may know, and we go through this in Killing the Killers, those three books back, by the way, uh, Soleimani, the head of the Iranian National Guard, which is the spear point for terrorism, was assassinated by the U.S. government, by a drone. And we take you step by step through that assassination. Iran did not do anything after Soleimani got waxed. They said they were going to, but they didn't. Why? Because Donald Trump, President of the United States, spoke to the mullah who's in charge over there, Khomeini somebody, said, you do anything, any overt military action against the United States, we're going to blow up all your ports. And if you look at the map, there's about four ports where Iran gets food. Iran cannot feed itself. It's a desert. It has to import food. Okay. Trump was very blunt. He said, you do anything, we're destroying all your ports, you'll starve. That's what happened. I know that's what happened. So they didn't do anything, Iran. Enter Joe Biden, who is much softer than Trump. I think Even if you hate Trump's guts and you love Biden, that statement is absolutely accurate. Biden's soft. Afghanistan, you know what happened. Putin didn't do anything other than, you know, the Internet behind the scenes stuff. When Trump is president, Trump's not president. Putin invades Ukraine. Why? Because they know Biden's soft. Everybody knows he's soft. Nobody fears him. Nobody. So what Biden did was when he came in, 
he, he didn't knock the sanctions out, economic sanctions against Iran. He just didn't enforce them vigilantly. And then he gave uh, the Iranians six billion dollars. That was frozen money. That was their money that was frozen for, in exchange for American hostages. You all know that. Now, the right wing and the Republican Party says that entered into Iran's enabling of Hamas. That's not true. This operation was on the board, according to very, very good reporting, uh, since August, long before the money for hostages swap. But it does give Iran Iran, um, access to money sometime. They don't have it now. It's in a bank in Gutter. It's overseen. Gutter's not going to release it unless the United States gives a go, which Biden probably will do down the road. Anyway, so you're dealing with a situation now where Hamas is a terror group and designated a terror group. Okay, so the U.S. government says Hamas is a terror group. That means if the U.S. government wanted to assassinate anybody in Hamas, it could legally. All right. Okay. So again, I go back to where, where are they going to rockets? Not building them. Can't build them. Don't have any of that. Okay. Where are they getting the guns? Where are they getting the uh, training their uh, fighters? Got to be done in Iran. There's no other place in the Middle East they could do it. And they float the uh, weapons through the Mediterranean. Gaza's on a the coast. There's no port security in Gaza. It's run by Hamas. Moss runs it. So the boats come in, they unload the rockets, and boom, 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 boom. That's how it goes down. Money, Moss doesn't have any money. Iran funds everything. So CNN says, no, no. Okay. They say what they say. Wall Street Journal, much more authoritative, says Iran's behind it. Now, I don't know. I've been talking to a lot of people, but I can't show you Definite proof. And as I said, if it bears out somehow that Iran had nothing to do with this, I'll apologize. But I find that extremely hard to believe. And that's the memo. All right, so Joe Biden today had a couple of things on his schedule. He met with some Jewish leaders, the White House. Good, you know, fine. All of this is basically what um, Prince Charles does. So Prince Charles has no... Uh, power, political power in England at all. He's ceremonial. He meets with people. He does this. That's what Biden does. Biden doesn't solve any problems. He's not with his national security guys. He's not making any statements on Iran or terrorism. He never does that. Okay, He just doesn't do it. He's a ceremonial president. Other people in his administration do the nuts and bolts. Now, it is not a good time, as I predicted in August, for Joe Biden this autumn. Let's run it down. Wholesale prices rose in September, fastest pace since April. 2.2% inflation. So all this does is make it harder for working Americans to make ends meet. I always say Biden's going to be running against the grocery store. That's who he's running against, the grocery store. You know what you're paying. You're paying a lot more than you paid under Trump, period. Now, the left and Democratic Party make all excuses. They can petty fog the issue. They can... It's bull. You walk in, you buy what you need, you pay, you're paying more. Pay more for gas, pay more for heating, pay more for insurance premiums, a lot more for insurance premiums. Okay? That's it. But inflation's on the rise again. The second thing is there is a group called the uh, America First Legal Foundation. This is interesting. I didn't know about this group. America First Legal Foundation files a Freedom of Information Act against the National Archives. Pretty interesting, right? So the National Archives logs in all the emails and calls made by the president. That's why they know if they don't have the paper, like they didn't have for Trump and Biden, who took documents and put them in their personal houses, both of them did, National Archives knows that. All right, so it's a record. That's the way the government keeps track of the executive branch. Well, apparently... The archives actually were hiding the fact that there are more than 20,000 emails between Vice President Biden, under Obama, of course, and 
Hunter Biden's business operations, 20,000. And they got this because they filed a Freedom of Information Act. And the National Archives had to give it to them. Didn't want to give it to them, had to give it to them. So now we hark back to Biden saying, oh, I don't have anything to do with my uh, son's business. Oh, yeah? 20,000 emails going into not only Hunter, but your brother Jim, all of the people working for them that were making the money overseas. 20,000. Now, the House investigative committees should go through those 20,000. All right. So I don't know what they actually handed over to America first, but this is a a really interesting story. So that's uh, on top of the inflation. Not a good day for Biden. And I'll give you his poll numbers in a little while. Banks are canceling law abiding Americans because they don't like their politics. It's real and it's un-American. Patriots like Dr. Ben Carson, Larry Elder, John Rich, and experienced conservative bankers have started America's first cancel-proof bank called Old Glory Bank. Old Glory Bank's mission statement is very simple. It's the Constitution. They do not subscribe to ESG, only PSL, Privacy, Security, Liberty. They value faith, family, freedom, and the flag. Old Glory Bank has one location only in Oklahoma, but they have top-notch mobile banking, so they can serve customers in all 50 states. Old Glory Bank is a real FDIC-insured bank. You're insured up to $250,000 per depositor. So cancel your bank before they cancel you. Please go to oldglorybank.com, open an account today. Remember, terms and conditions apply, an equal housing lender. Here is the mail. Neil Horton, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Bill, you're right, the $6 billion had no influence on the Hamas attack. However, Biden is partly at fault for taking away the oil sanctions, which has provided Iran with much money they could use for supporting Hamas. He didn't take them away, Biden. He just didn't enforce them. Now you could say it's the same thing. Um, Lisa Rosati, Montreal, Canada. Bill, in your message of the day, you state the attack by Hamas on Israel is not Biden's fault. However, by his being a deeply compromised president and repeatedly showing weak leadership, both internally on the world stage, he has emboldened terrorism. That's theoretical argument. It's valid, certainly, but it's theoretical. You know the difference. So Biden thinks that he's the greatest diplomat the world has ever seen. That's what he thinks. But people like you and me to some extent feel that his weakness has indeed emboldened terrorism. And the concierge member, Anne has direct access to me. I hope you consider that program for yourself. This is not Biden's fault. While I support Donald Trump, we'll vote for him again. Trump being in office would not have changed anything. This is history repeating itself. It's been ongoing long before Biden or Trump were in office. I disagree a little bit. I don't think they, Iran would have been that bold to do this when, if Trump had been in office. Because he would have, if the intel came back from our people that Iran did this, was behind it, Trump would have blown up some of their ports like I told you in the beginning of the program. Frank Seda, Savannah, Tennessee. Bill, your take on the attacks in Israel, spot on. Context you provided helps better understand the situation. That's why we are here. Always context. That said, I'm certain the Israeli response will have collateral damage to innocent people. I'm certain that will be used against the Israeli military. That's true. You know, I got a bunch of letters going, well, what did Israel ever do? If you look at the U.N. reports and you can ferret them out there online, the Israeli military has at times violated the rights of civilians. They have. Now, their argument is, hey, we're trying to protect our own lives. We, the United States, violated some rights in Guantanamo Bay. We did. I would have done it to this day. 
exactly the same that Bush did it. I would have thrown these guys in Guantanamo Bay. Violated the rights, you know, hey. But there will be more death and more blood in Gaza and Israel. That is for sure. Lee, concierge member, thank you, Lee. Geraldo is completely wrong in regard to a two-state solution for Israel and Palestine. It's not possible because the radical Islamists do not want it. Excellently. Excellent. You can talk all day long about a two-state, but the terrorists rule there. Hamas rules. And they don't want a two-state. They want to kill Jews. Wipe them out. Linda Wallace, Midlothian, Virginia. You please recommend a good book on the genesis of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Exodus by Leon Uris. That goes back. Exodus. E-X-O-D-U-S. It was a movie, too. Otto Preminger directed. Danielle Moritz, Narbeth, Pennsylvania, my 10th grader. He's about to start reading The Crucible for his English class. I am going to simultaneously read Killing the Witches so we can compare and contrast our stories each evening. What a, what a smart thing to do. You're a good mom, Danielle, because it's an important discussion, especially the due process, cancel culture part of Killing the Witches. Very, very important for younger people to know that. Brian Pierce, West Boston, Massachusetts, Killing the Witches is your best book by far, O'Reilly. I find out from my sister-in-law that we have relatives that were involved way back then. A lot of people do, <laughs> because there's so few um, settlers in the new world that the spawn is everywhere. My ancestor founded Charlestown, Massachusetts. His name, Hoyt, is on the deed. Charlestown is a suburb of Boston, a big one. It's where Bunker Hill is. My ancestor came over three ships after the Mayflower. And by the way, one of the things I'm most proud of in Killing the Witches, which is on fire, by the way, it's like big book, is the portrayal of the Mayflower and what happened aboard that ship. You know, Americans say, oh, pilgrims, Mayflower, passive stuffing. No, <laughs> this was brutal. 100 people, 66 days. They couldn't even go up on deck. One guy tried it. Where do you see what happened to him? So if you read all 13 killing books, Killing the Witches is the first in, Ameri in the American history, because right, it starts in the beginning. You'll know everything about your country. Everything. Because we have, boom, a timeline from 1692 up to the present day. Okay, we have so many new premium and concierge members. We're giving you, as I promised, a bundle where um, this is a good thing. That you uh, can pay a fee of $59.95. That sounds better than $60, right? You get Killing the Witches, a really nice polo shirt that will last you the rest of your life, and a three-month BillOReilly.com premium membership gift card that you can give to somebody as a present. Okay, this is a fabulous deal. So you get three things that you can either keep. Well, you want to give the gift card away. But the shirt is going to look great. We have great women's shirts, too. The book, obviously. Okay, so... Um, we just, this, uh, we're on October 7th, October 27th, all right, two weeks from Friday at the Paramount Theater in Huntington. So they keep expanding the theater because so many people want to see the show. So there are a few seats left. See me and Sid Rosenberg. Going to be a really funny show. You're going to like it. So go to BillOReilly.com or Ticketmaster or the Paramount Theater in Huntington. I'll set you right up. Where are the day? Do not be pedantic. P-E-D-A-N-T-I-C. Some people say I'm pedantic, but you don't want to be that. Back with a final thought in a moment. Delta Rescue is near and dear to many of our hearts. 
More than two million animals are killed in pounds each year, not to mention all those abandoned in the wilderness. Delta Rescue's founder, Leo Crillo, is doing great work with his no-kill, care-for-life animal sanctuary. It's no small feat to rescue and care for thousands of dogs, cats, and horses, too. These animals need love, food, shelter, and veterinary care. That's why Delta Rescue needs our help. Every donation counts, and they rely solely on the contributions of people like you and me to care for their animals. So please help if you can. Visit DeltaRescue.org, DeltaRescue.org, DeltaRescue.org. All right, let's go to the final thought of the day. I'm going to go back to California and Newsom. I hope you understand. And I know you do, because you wouldn't be watching and listening to me um, for the No Spin News if you didn't understand how deadly the progressive left is. By giving children as young as 12 years old the authority to move out of their home on their own, not state coming in to investigate abuse or neglect, none of that. The kid just makes the decision. And tells a counselor at school, somebody else, I want to live someplace else. Bang. They're out of there. That undermines every tenet of parenting. It rips apart any parental authority. Because the kid might have a beef. Kid might be, you know, you know how teenagers, well, I hope you do. I do. How they can get particularly if they get involved with drugs or they get in the wrong crowd or they, you know, they start doing things you got and they can now leave on their own. This is what California is doing. This is what Sacramento and the governor Newsom is doing. This is one of the worst things I've ever seen in this country. This is Marxism. That's what it is, where the state raises the children, not the parents. No parental authority. So I wanted to reinforce this in a final thought. I can't vote for the Democratic Party. Not as it stands now. And I'm not a party guy, as you know. It's just so destructive. Thank you for watching and listening to the No Spin News. We'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you for watching the No Spin News. To watch the full episode anytime on BillOReilly.com, Please sign up to become a premium or concierge member. Visit BillOReilly.com to sign up and start watching today.